Hello, my name is Brad. Now I am new to the TRE team. I'm a physiotherapist and a coach based in Mount Maunganui, New Zealand. Now I tore my meniscus in my knee around seven or eight years ago now as I was training for an ultra. So in this video, I wanna go through step by step some of the do's and more importantly, some of the don'ts on how to deal with a meniscus injury, a knee tear. And as you'll see at the end of this, I actually managed to get back with some of the habits that I put in post injury. So it is possible with injury to use it to your advantage to come back stronger, better and faster. Now there were three main obstacles in my rehab after the, the knee meniscus injury. So the first obstacle was getting the right information, getting a plan in place. So I was lucky enough to go and visit a really good orthopedic surgeon who explained to me that the inner two thirds of the meniscus it has no blood supply so it's not theoretically going to heal. So that's where my tear was. So he suggested to me that surgery wasn't actually a, an option at this stage and I was best to conservatively try and load it over a period of time, maybe three to nine months. So that's what I did. So I just de-loaded it. I didn't run because whenever I did run it was painful. So I actually listened to my body and having that plan in place from an expert like the orthopedic surgeon really helped me stick to that plan. So I threw myself into other things. Some cross training. So I, I didn't focus on what I couldn't do, I focused on what I could do. And that really helped turn my mindset around. And that was my second obstacle, my really my negative mindset. You know, when you're a runner and you can't run, you get down, you get depressed, you go into your cave and you sulk. So what I did is I just turned that round and looked at what I could do. So I turned to cross training, I looked at cycling, I looked at swimming, um, I went to the gym and did a little bit of cross training um, on the elliptical trainer as well. And I found that I was able to work on my cardiovascular fitness and not irritate my knee. So I just threw myself into that. Now some of the tips that I want to give you about the cross training is just find something that you love. Like if you don't like swimming and you hate the water, well then look at the cycling. And if you don't like the bike well, and you like swimming, then do the cycling. Just do, do, do the swimming, sorry. Do what you like to do. And I think that's the biggest, most important thing. So try and find some kind of cross training, not running so that you're not so you're deloading the knee and, and do what you like. Now, some tips there are, if you are swimming, make sure that you don't do breast stroke because that can really irritate the knee. And the other thing with the cycling is don't push big gears because again, that can irritate the knee. Start within capacity and build up. Now, the third obstacle was, when do I start running again? Now there's no black and white, hard and fast answer to that. You really have to individualize it. So what worked for me is I started running on softer surfaces. So after about uh, between, anywhere between six and nine months, I tried a little bit of running on some grass with some shoes on. And I even tried running on soft sand with bare feet, just for 30 seconds at a time. Maybe 30 seconds times one, two or three, twice a week with some walking at either side of that just to pad it up. And then over time, I was able to run for longer periods, the ratio of run to walk got bigger and bigger. So I was able to run for one minute, then two minutes. So from nine months to 12 months, I loaded it authentically. I listened to my knee. So in the morning when I got up, that morning marker, pain and swelling, if it was sore and if it was a bit swollen, I'd back off. I didn't let that become a negative ongoing story. So I think the tips with cross training is find something that you love, do that so that you're not loading the knee, but you're working on your cardiovascular fitness and then listen to that knee, be authentic with it. Look at that morning marker. So when you get up in the morning, the day following the, the cardiovascular fitness, whether that be cycling or swimming, uh, and then as you start running, make sure that it's not swollen and sore. So if you can do that, you get the right information with a good plan, so get a good team around you. If you can change the mindset and focus on something uh, that you can do, that you can work on rather than what you can't do, which is the running in that early stage. And then the third thing, start running within your capacity so that you're not causing more and more inflammation and irritation. If you can do that, then you'll get back slowly to running again in a conservative manner, possibly without the need for surgery. So one thing that I found was really useful in the rehab phase was core stability and glute control. So if you want more information on how to get strong glutes and run better, check out the link supplied. So thanks heaps for listening. I've got way more information to share with you guys in following videos, but right now, I'm off for a run on some soft sand. I'll see you next time.